Hello and welcome to All Top Fives. Last week I looked at some of the major conspiracy theories surrounding the moon landings in the 1960s and 1970s, all claiming that man never walked on the moon. This week I'm presenting what evidence we have for man landing on the moon. These five are what I think offer the most compelling proof. Number five, retro reflectors. First off is a strong piece of evidence from the laser ranging retroflector experiment. These retro reflectors are equipment used to reflect laser beams. They are targets for earth-based tracking lasers made of highly polished mirror. The laser hits the surface and bounces back to Earth because the retroreflector condenses the reflection, preventing it from scattering too far. Even so, only a minute amount of light can be detected as returned from the Moon. However, without these retroreflectors, we'd not be able to bounce anything off the Moon, so their presence helps us confirm that astronauts did indeed land there. This equipment is far too delicate to send in a probe, and it requires manual calibration and deployment by a trained astronaut on the Moon's surface, so there's no way that these could have been sent up since 1969 on an unmanned mission. Further retroreflectors were set up in the Apollo 14 and 15 missions as well, providing more evidence that humans have walked on the Moon. Number 4. Third-party tracking. Many conspiracy theorists accuse the USA government and NASA of orchestrating the moon landings themselves, and keeping all the details to themselves so they could spin a fake story to the media. In truth though, aside from NASA, a great number of independent third-party organizations used their own methods to track the Apollo missions to land on the moon. For the first moon landing, Apollo 11, the following data was available. Bochum University in Germany independently tracked space events and data of the mission. Sky and Telescope magazine in 1969 compiled sightings of the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Jodrell Bank Observatory in the UK publicly provided their independent tracking data, and a radio technician in Kentucky, USA picked up and recorded transmissions broadcast from the astronauts on the Moon live, with everything matching up to that recorded by the Bochum Observatory. Further, similar independent data was recorded for the future moon landing missions. Conspiracists often counteract this with the argument that NASA bought these organizations out. It's a weak argument as there's a lack of motive and NASA's already considerably stretched budget to take in, as well as adding yet more third parties into a huge cover-up. But more on that later. Number 3. Landing Sites what better evidence could you ask for than a high-definition image of the landing sites of the lunar landing missions? Theorists often claim that the Hubble telescope should be used to photograph these landing sites, but unfortunately Hubble can't achieve the required resolution for resolving specific landing site features. Many non-NASA parties have released photographs of the Moon taken from space which do show dark features or launch halos that they claim are the Apollo missions. In 2009, however, NASA launched the successful Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, whose primary mission included photographing the Moon landing sites for Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16 and 17. These photos clearly show the lander craft from the missions, as well as scientific equipment left behind and even the astronauts' tracks across the Moon's surface as they explored and performed experiments. Since there's no atmosphere on the Moon, there's no wind or weather that would degrade or erase these objects or markings, hence their presence after decades still. Conspiracists don't believe these images from NASA, claiming that they've been doctored by NASA to cover up their hoax. However, since then, in 2009 and 2010 respectively, both India's Chandrayaan-1 mission and China's Chang'e-2 mission have photographed multiple Apollo landing sites between them, revealing lunar rover tracks, equipment and other traces that show the landings happened. The Very Large Telescope project in Cuba is still expected to produce extremely high-resolution photographs of a landing site too, further verifying NASA's claims that they successfully landed on the Moon multiple times. Number 2. Moon Rocks But what about physical evidence then? Photos can be doctored, yes, but what about actual physical proof the Moon landings took place? Look no further than Moon Rocks. 
During the six manned missions to the surface of the moon, NASA collected 380 kilograms, that's 838 pounds, of moon rocks and brought them back to Earth. These moon rocks are available to see in museums and exhibitions worldwide and have been verified unanimously as being of lunar origin, that is, from the moon. We know this because they've been dated as over 200 million years older than the oldest rocks we know of on Earth. Also, they have traits unlike anything else on Earth, including a lack of alteration by water and evidence of existence in a vacuum. The NASA samples also matched those collected by the Soviet missions on all traits. So it's not just a NASA versus the world thing this time. Some conspiracy theorists accept that these rocks are of lunar origin, but they claim that they must be moon meteorites, bits of rock that get flung from the moon's surface after a meteor impact and then survive the trip through our atmosphere and land here on Earth. There are many samples of moon meteorites after all, many collected by NASA themselves. It's a good point, but the first lunar meteorite was discovered in 1979, ten years after the first moon landing. Additionally, even after decades of worldwide search expeditions to recover such rocks, only a total of 30 kilograms has been retrieved. Not a patch on the 380 kilograms that NASA returned from the moon with. And these wouldn't have been brought back by robots either. They needed astronauts to do it. Even if NASA had been using robots similar to modern-day robots proposed for recovering samples from the Moon and Mars, they'd have had to send up at the very least 300 separate robot missions to bring back 380 kilograms of rock. And that's impractical and highly improbable, especially with the technology available in the 1960s. Number 1. The People Finally, what I think is the strongest piece of evidence for the moon landings being real is the staggering number of people involved in the missions. There were the astronauts themselves, scientists at NASA and elsewhere, hundreds of ground control staff, airspace operators, astronomers, administration staff, government officials, security officers, police officers, TV production members, broadcasters, consultants, medics, engineers, drivers, pilots, builders, cleaners, and the list goes on. The sheer size and complexity of the entire operation involved an estimated 400,000 people directly, with millions more watching live with a careful eye, ready to spot any mistakes or signs of a hoax. It would simply be impossible if the moon landings had been faked to cover up something of this magnitude, and to have no one come out of hiding and reveal it was a conspiracy. None of these estimated 400,000 people has ever made any hint that the Apollo missions were a hoax. Just take a look at a far smaller conspiracy, the Watergate scandal that Richard Nixon attempted to cover up unsuccessfully. It seems that only people with no connection to the Apollo missions have ever claimed it was all a conspiracy, which shows how unfounded some of the accusations are. Buzz Aldrin is famous for speaking out in anger at people who claim the moon landings were a hoax. And fair enough, they're essentially saying one of his life achievements that he worked hard decades for is all just a lie. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black if I ever thought of saying Will I misrepresented you get myself. away from me? You're a coward and a liar and a thief. And that's it from all top fives for this week. It seems then that the debate is one of faith. Those who believe humans have walked on the moon choose to accept the wealth of evidence in different forms from NASA and other independent parties. Those who believe it was all a hoax choose to disregard this evidence as fake, incorrect or just outright lies. It depends what you believe without being able to get up there and visit it yourself. I hope my two videos have given you some more information to help you decide. This is a surprisingly sensitive topic, so please do have good-natured, healthy debates in the comments and let's not resort to flaming or throwing insults. It's just not worth it. If you've enjoyed this video and the other one and any others that I have, please do give them thumbs up or share them with your friends because it really does help me out. You can click on the like button or the share button to do just that. And there's the subscribe button, of course, if you'd like to get a new video from me every single Tuesday. So, peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you all next time on All Top Fives.